Hello, my name is Matt Max. Welcome back to Orbital Mechanics with Kerbal Space Program. Today, Kepler's laws of planetary motion. Oh, yes. Kepler's laws of planetary motion were published 1609 and were very radical when they came out because back then people still believed that orbits were circles. They actually didn't really believe that orbits were ellipses because circles were perfect, right? And the universe was God's work, so everything was perfect. But the observations showed that actually Mars orbit is, is an ellipse and other orbits are ellipses as well. And later on, Newton even showed that Kepler's laws of planetary motion follow from Newton's laws under certain assumptions that hold true very well in our solar system. So, although the name is laws of planetary motion, they hold true for every orbit. So, it doesn't matter whether we're talking about the Earth orbiting the Sun, or the Moon orbiting the Earth, or a spacecraft orbiting the Moon, or the Earth, or the Sun. The laws of planetary motions hold true for every orbit. Okay? So, Kepler will talk about... I will use the original formulations. He will talk about the Sun and planets, but it's true for every orbit, okay? I will use the term body for the body you're orbiting around, and I will use the term satellite for whatever is orbiting. All right, so let's get started. The first law, let me get this right. So first law states, the orbit of every planet is an ellipse with the sun at one of the two foci. That is a really important and cool law. So first of all, what is a foci? If you have a circle, the foci is the center. It's a point from which you construct the circle. If you have an ellipse, you need two of those. So those two red points are the foci of this ellipse, right? I didn't really construct this ellipse, so I'm not 100% sure that those are the foci, but foci are the two points you use to construct an ellipse. There's also a middle point between the two foci. Fun fact, the relative distance between the foci and the middle point is the eccentricity, okay? When the eccentricity is zero, those two foci will be right on top of the middle point, and then it will become a circle. So, the really important part here is that the body you're orbiting is always on one of the two foci. And if you look into the game, we see what this means. It means that if you have a very elliptical orbit like this one, at one point of our orbit, we will be really close to the body we're orbiting, and at the other point, our satellite will be really far away from the body we are orbiting. Because it's an ellipse, and because the body we are orbiting is at one of the two foci points. That's really important. So that means, if you have an ellipse like this, the body you are orbiting has to be either here or here. There is no, it cannot be anywhere else. It cannot be here, it cannot be here, it cannot be here. It's not possible, okay? The body you are orbiting is always on one of the two foci points of an ellipse. Obviously, when you have a circle, those two foci points become one, right? But it still holds true, right? Even in a circular orbit, Kepler's laws still hold true. And actually, first of all, it's pretty impractical to get a perfectly circular orbit, because even if your apoapsis is one centimeter more than your periapsis, it's an ellipse and not a circle. But even if you get a perfect circle, and this is really cool, all the formulas you can use for an ellipse, you can also use for a circle. Because a circle is just a special kind of ellipse. Right? The ellipse is the more general case. So you can calculate circles with ellipses, it's pretty cool. Kepler's second law of planetary motion is even cooler, it's my favorite, okay? And it's probably also the most important one. So. A line joining a planet and the sun sweeps out equal areas during equal intervals of time. It's also known as equal area law. The reason why I per personally find this law so cool is because it sounds absolutely irrelevant and boring, right? <laughs> Who cares what areas align what? Who cares? But it's actually very... the implications are actually really important and the formulation is really, really cool. The second law states, a line joining a planet and the sun. This works for all orbits, so let's draw a line between our satellite and our body. And then it goes on and it says, 
sweeps out equal areas during equal intervals of time. Okay, so let's wait a certain time interval and let's mark the area that the spacecraft, the satellite, has swept out. So Kepler's second law states that if we are at any other point of our orbit, if you wait the same time interval, we will have the same area. So let's go to the opposite side of the orbit and let's see if it's true. So what we see here is when we are far away, the line connecting the planet and the spacecraft is really long. And the area is pretty big, even though this line right here is pretty small. When we are close to the planet, the line connecting the satellite and the planet is short. Hence, this line has to be longer in order for both areas to be the same. The only way to achieve this is if the satellite is going really fast when it's close to the planet and slower when farther away from the planet. So in reality, the equal area law is not about areas at all. It's not about geometry. It's about the speed of planets at different points of their orbit. It's about the speed of satellites at different points of their orbit. Isn't this an ingenious way to formulate the law? Kepler just wanted to talk about the speed that planets had at different points of their orbits, but he didn't want to talk about all those little variables like the size of the planet and so on and so forth. So he searched for the simplest possible formulation to formulate a law about the speed of the planets. And that formulation is the equal area law. The equal area law states that if you have a line connecting your satellite and the body you're orbiting, it will sweep the same areas in the same intervals of time, no matter whether you have a circular orbit or an elliptical orbit. And in an elliptical orbit, it means that the spacecraft will be faster when it's close to the body and it will be slower when it's far away from the body. That is pretty genius and really cool. All right, so Kepler's third law of planetary motion states, and this is a pretty short one, the square of the orbital period of a planet is directly proportional to the cube of the semi-major axes of the orbit. This formula, right? So the semi-major axis, again, is the distance from uh, the middle point. Uh, basically, when you connect the middle point with one of the foci, right, you get a line, and that is the semi-major axis, right? This is the major axis, this is the semi-major axis. Basically, what it means, math aside, when your orbit is bigger, it takes longer for you to have one orbital period. Makes perfect sense, right? Just that it's not directly proportional, it's proportional using this formula. And it is pretty cool and kind of beautiful that the relationship between the size of the orbit and the time it takes you to orbit it is so nice and simple, right? That happens a lot in nature. Anyway, my name is Fionat Max. Those were the three laws of planetary motion by Kepler. Thanks for watching this episode and see you next time.